defend that last sequence where you guys can call about five seconds and call the dial on time, that seven turns off the sequence there, and let's just talk about both those quick things. Yeah, that, uh, we had the timeout left. Uh, you know, Jake's experienced enough. He, he knows that we don't really want to use it unless we have to. Uh, it got to the point where we had to, and he was a little late calling it. Uh, so he was, you know, he was trying to do the right thing. Uh, and you're this early in the year, when those situations come up, in the game, even though we practiced them a couple times. We didn't practice all the stuff that happened tonight in this game. Uh, we haven't gotten to that point yet. Uh, you gotta get, you gotta have a couple breaks. And when we don't get a timeout and they get the ball, now it's their advantage again. And Seth made a, he made a good read on his own and turned and, and got that inbound pass. Coach, playing a game like this on November 14th, what's that like? Question. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I knew it was going to be a competitive game and a good game. You know, they, they've played two road games already, and they really haven't made any shots to, to speak of. You know, the shooting percentage has been way down. And it's a team that last year won 19 games, and as we know, you know, they've got their entire group back. So they know their stuff, they run their stuff well. And when they when they got open a couple times in the first five minutes, and they made a couple, I knew it was going to be a close competitive game. Now we missed on some scouting report things in the first half, uh, but at the same time, they're they're a good team, they're an experienced team, and they're well coached. So they got some they got some stuff done, and uh, so we had to make a lot of plays to to be there. I didn't feel like we should have been ahead at half time. You know, the way the game was going and the way that Toledo had played, I didn't feel like we should have had the lead. Now a lot of the reason we had the lead was because of what Dion was doing on his own. Um, but I. I we knew going into this game that they're they're a good team and they're an experienced team. And if things got going in their direction a little bit, that it was going to be a very competitive game. <clears throat> Is there anything you tell your team when the other team's hitting shots off balance, crazy shots like that? Uh, you know, I, I think they maybe hit a couple of those, uh, but they also ran their stuff well and they found the right guys and, uh, and you know, they did a good job of getting the ball where they wanted. Doing a good job with the right guys taking shots that they practice, and so I think they deserve credit for, for a lot of that. Um, you know, and oftentimes when that happens, then, you, then you, you're going to throw one in, you know, on your heels or covered. Uh, so we need to look at it and we need to work to defend better. I, uh, there was probably some situations where we defended pretty well, but overall, we, we need to take a hard look at it. And we're going to have to get a lot better defensively between now and seven. The last 10 minutes or so. I think you went with the same five. Uh, was there any kind of thoughts to switch things up or at all, especially with the kind of off on a shot a little bit tonight? Yeah, you know, that, uh, that's the other part with being this early in the year. Uh, and for the most part, other than Chip, those guys that were coming in off the bench, Morrison's got a little bit of experience from last year. Uh, but Nate and Marv really don't have any game experience to speak of. That situation to just keep rolling guys in and out. We're not to that point yet. You know, I like what those guys have done in practice, and I like what the, I like the way that our team is moving. And I do think we're going to have good depth, Carson. But that uh, that felt to me like a situation where we needed to play our most experienced guys. And then Bohannon had been in the game the most, so he was moving around. And, um, and I don't worry about whether he you know, makes his first couple or misses his first couple. He's he's going to make shots. He, he really shoots it, and, he's, and he works very hard. He's always prepared. So. His plan or not plan will never be determined on whether he makes a couple or misses a couple. And he made that big one later in the game. But more, more just a feel of we got to have our most experienced guys, and then both been in there the most, so we let him, let him play. And I thought he did a, did a decent job. Coach, uh, talking about the bench, you uh, you <coughs> played nine total guys tonight. Uh, do you, do you feel like you're maybe have taken a step forward in defining the rotation a little bit, or where, where do you think that sits um, right now? Yeah, not uh, not so much that way. I guess uh, you know we know what our starting unit's going to be. We know Chip uh, is playing very well. Uh, you know Matt Morrison's got a little experience, and then the, that next uh, you know Austin obviously has some experience. Uh, but then those other three or four guys, you know, we're still we're still defining those roles. So I think that's going to take a little while. Uh, I like what the guys have done. You know, and, and because they didn't play a lot of minutes tonight, or it didn't look like they were in the rotation. You know, not an indication of. How they practiced or where I see them. Uh, this game dictated that we you know, play the play the guys that we played, and uh, so it worked out that way tonight. Uh, 
and then given the small amount of minutes off the bench, concern at all uh, about only seven points between those four guys off the bench? No, no, I, uh, you know, I think with Nate and Chip and, and uh, in particular and Matt Morrison and a couple of other guys, uh, they'll be uh, they'll be fine from a scoring standpoint. What about the game Dion had? Is that something you kind of expected from me before the season started? You said you expected big things from him. Yeah, you know, he's. Uh, it's been talked about. You know, I've talked about it. You know, he's prepared himself very well, and we saw that again tonight. You know, we've seen it in all four games now, and um, he did it tonight against a, a good team and against, for the most part, experienced guards. They're, they're point guards and sophomores as well, but, but he played minutes like Deion did last year. Um, and he got, boy, that, uh, that stretch in the first half was impressive. Uh, and that's you know, that's where you know, our team is, th this team is built for the transition game offensively, and Deion having the ball. Uh, Ball screen actions are good for us. Anything we can do to get him freed up just a little, just get him a little bit of daylight, he's, he's going to make good plays. Some nights he's going to score a lot. Some nights he's going to find guys. He's going to end up with 7, 8, 9, 10 assists. So um, really like what he's doing. But it's all because he's prepared. 32 free throws plus 22 in that marriage. How important was that tonight? Yeah, I thought that was very important. Um, and I think that's probably why we were ahead at halftime. Um, they had done a very good job running their stuff and making shots and playing well. We did a good job of getting it, getting it inside, either with the pass or with the dribble, uh, and getting to the free throw line. So we had that lead at half. And, you know, that that bonus and double bonus as you're going down the first half, uh, certainly in the second half, you know, when you go to that line in a close game, uh, it's nice to know you're going to be shooting two uh, you know, earlier in that second half. So yeah, that was an important aspect for us. It seemed like in the second half, coach, that uh, Toledo. Uh, made some adjustments in kind of taking away Dion's penetration a little bit. And then um, it seemed like the offense would uh, maybe, maybe go a little bit stagnant in periods uh, in the second half and overtime. Uh, uh, 11 to 30 from the field in the second half and overtime uh, combined there. Is that any concern at all about that lack of offensive execution? Or is this, or is this an example of film that you can go back and watch and correct those yeah, errors? It, uh you know, part of the part of the reason we didn't have as much going with Dion, you know, I didn't call his number as much as I should have in the second half, um, and that uh, you know, that's on me to make sure that that we're doing the things that our team can have success with, and uh, uh, so that was that was part of it. Uh, then I also felt like we made some good plays and we pitched it to guys and they had good looks and, and did make some. Uh, we had a couple that were in around the basket, um, and that that didn't go for us. And then it's early, as you know, right? It's early. I mean, it's early in the year. Dude, we're going to have, you know, I'd uh, I'd like to have our offense, you know, smoking on all levels. Everything we're doing and everything we're trying. And it, as soon as they do something, we quick go to an adjustment. And it, you know, it uh, it's early. So I uh, I give our guys credit for staying in there and uh, making enough plays to get to overtime and then getting a win. Thank you, guys.